YouTube. Man, it feels so good to be back. Obviously, it's been a hot minute since I've uploaded any original content. Truth is, with all the growth that's been happening on the other platforms, as amazing as it's been, it's been extremely time consuming and eating up a lot of the time that I wanted to dedicate to YouTube. On top of that, we have everything that's going on with COVID and all the complexity there, but I'm super excited now as things have become a little bit more balanced and on an even keel as far as time management to be bringing you guys original content on a more consistent basis. As I've continued to grow, the number one thing that continues to happen is I get more and more individuals reaching out to me, asking me questions about various elements of the growth. Some of it is about marketing, but actually a lot of it is about the technical side of streaming. So I thought today would be a great opportunity to kickstart with you guys talking about the five most important items you need to be considering if you're going to be starting a streaming setup. I'm going to go through not only what I use today, but also what I started with and some things you should be considering when you hit the open market looking for your own equipment. Let's get into it. So this is gonna be a pretty important video. But before we get into it, I do wanna let you know that I am a variety streamer out on Twitch. I play a variety of games, have built an unbelievable community. So would love for you to come hang out, drop a follow, chat with the Bear Gang, and have a little bit of fun. Also, if you're interested, I am also on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Links for all of those can be found in the description below. Also, if this video is useful to you, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. You can click the little bell next to it and you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video in the future. Okay, enough plugging, let's get into it. To it. When talking about your streaming setup, there's really kind of five main characteristics that you really need to consider and all things that I'm going to cover here today. So when thinking about your streaming setup, one of the biggest misconceptions is that your camera is your most important piece of equipment. In reality, your camera is actually your second, if not even your third most important piece of equipment. There's kind of two things that are above it and let's get into that. Number one, most important piece of your equipment as you are building a streaming setup is your audio. The way that you sound and the way that you interact with people is by far going to be more important than the facial recognition that they see. So you need to make sure that you are investing in good grade audio equipment above all else. For me personally, when I first got started, I used the Yeti Snowball. I think it's about 50 bucks right now out on Best Buy. When I first got started, I used the Yeti Snowball. It's a really good budget option for a USB mic, uh, highly popular among streamers. I think right now it's like 50 or 60 bucks out there, super easy to plug in. It's a USB mic, not a lot of integration or depth, but if you're trying to build something on a budget, especially when you're first getting started, this is by far one of the best things that you can initially get. Now, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, I'll show you what I'm using now. Now, about three months ago, I upgraded over to the Blue Yeti microphone, which actually sits in front of me today. I've noticed a dramatic increase in overall audio quality. It has more dynamic range, as well as the ability to handle both soft and loud noises. Four different audio sets settings allow for it to be able to make sure it is honing in on the audio that you're trying to capture. I mean, overall, I just think it was a big upgrade across the board on almost every element. It produces a very clean output and still is as easy to use as the Snowball was. Now, I do not use audio mixers like many streamers do. They might use a Go XLR. Uh, a lot of my mixing actually happens inside of Streamlabs, which I'll show you on another video in the future. For me, I want something when it comes to my audio to be high quality, but also user friendly. I'm not not a big audio guy. I didn't grow up in the music industry. It's not like I'm a, a sound technician who understands balancing and EQ levels. I want something that I can plug in that I know is going to give me a good output. The Blue Yeti has been an unbelievable microphone and definitely the top thing that you should be considering when you're building your setup is number one, thinking about your audio. The second thing that is the most important is your lighting. Without lighting, your camera is absolutely useless and I'll show you what I mean. This is still using the exact same camera that I am right now, but without lighting, you can dramatically see the impact that it has. By generating lighting that is front facing, you're gonna be able to illuminate your face and make sure that you stand out and it's going to deliver an overall higher quality picture. When I first got started, I had a singular ring light that was about 20 bucks out on Amazon. Today, I have two LED panels that sit in front of me that I'll make sure to link in the description below. Each one I think was about 40 bucks out on Amazon, but they do an unbelievable job making sure to light up my entire face versus when I first got started, I had a singular ring light that was in front front of me. And a lot of times what that would do is light up kind of the front end of my face, but you'd get a lot of shadow on the sides. Having two lights coming in diagonally at each angle, make sure that the entire body, everything
everything that's in the image is well lit, creating a deliverable and clean picture. But the other thing you need to consider when it comes to lighting is what's behind you. Having something that lights up and illuminates behind you continues to create a cleaner cut line between the image that you're focusing on, aka me, and the background that's behind me. Now normally, along that shelf, I would have Christmas lights that would also add to this dilemma. Unfortunately, those burned out about two days ago. So all that I can show you right now is actually the bulb that's behind me. And I get asked this question a ton. What do I do for the RBG lighting that I use? Because I do have an RBG bulb, right, that can go from purple to red to yellow to green, whatever, blue, whatever I want it to do. And I'm seeing a lot of streamers go out right now and spend large amounts of money to get this same effect. Here's my secret. I spent $20 all in on this entire kit. The bulb that sits behind me is a GE LED bulb from Target, and it sits down on a $6 desk lamp. It is nothing more than a lamp on the floor with a bulb behind me with a remote control to control the whole lighting. You could go spend hundreds of dollars on Nano Leafs or some of their competitors between Philips Hue and get ultimately the same effect, maybe a higher quality or more customization. But when you're first getting started, I don't think that's as important as just creating the overall effect versus the full customization or range of output that those higher end items can produce. Yes, they look flashy. Sure, they're gonna add a little bit more element, but is the element really worth an extra $200 or more in a lot of those instances? For me, I decided no. I'd be happy just adding some form of color to my background. At the end of the day, my gameplay and my personality should be what shines through first and foremost. Okay, number three. Now let's get into the camera. I know this is where a lot of people wanna focus on. When I got started, I used the same digital camera that I feel everybody and their mom uses, which is the Logitech C920. The C920 is a good beginning budget webcam. It is 1080 on its output. It can capture in 30 FPS, which is all you need for a front facing camera. Super simple, cost effective, probably the most universally used piece of equipment for people getting started. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. However, eventually I wanted the upgrade. I wanted to be able to get a little bit wider scope of lens as well as an overall cleaner picture. So I upgraded to the Logitech Brio. It is a 4K webcam with 60 FPS capability but realistically is just as easy to use as the C920. Everything you see today is filmed on that same Brio. Now, if I was ever gonna take a step up from this, the next step is actually to get into physical cameras. Now we're starting to talk about DSLR cameras, getting into Sony's and Canon's. Now you're getting into lenses. That's a whole nother game that I'm not ready for at this point in my journey. The Brio is more than enough, a great mid-range webcam that I cannot recommend enough for everybody who needs that is wanting that upgrade. Number four is a big one that you need to be considering, which is going to be your PC. There's a lot of streamers when they begin early on that are streaming off of their consoles, whether that be their Xbox app or their PlayStation app. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is a great option that is free and effective when you're first getting started. But eventually when you wanna take that upgrade, when you wanna get that step to get a more professional looking stream, you need to be streaming off of a PC. And recently we built a brand new PC from the ground up. Now, the PC specs I'm gonna list for you right here, but basically it's an i9 processor with a 2060 Super GPU. It's got 64 gigabytes of RAM, as well as a one terabyte solid state drive. This thing is a tank and I love it. Now, one thing I should note is I don't game and stream off of this same PC. I did it for about two days and realized that it was a huge bear on my GPU. Again, another video I should make in the future. The primary reason for this is to be able to stream off of it effectively, more so than the laptop that I started with and to be able to edit content at a reliable and speedy pace. Now, if you're unfamiliar with PC specs, much like I was when I first got started, let me walk you through the three most important things when it comes to your PC in relation to streaming. It's gonna be your processor, AKA your CPU, your graphic card, AKA your GPU, and your overall RAM. Let me talk about what each one does. When you're streaming, you have multiple things that are happening inside of your computer. You have a general gameplay that is being compressed as a live image sent to your computer or captured live on your computer, decrypted, reamplified, and then broadcasted out. 
This becomes a very heavy bear on both the CPU and GPU. You add in things like animated graphics or overlays, and that's only gonna continue to add to the bear that needs to be required. Your RAM is going to be the amount of tasks that your computer can handle at once. Lower amounts of RAM means that your computer is going to struggle handling more difficult tasks, or higher amounts of RAM is going to lead to more output and capability. At 64 gigabytes of RAM, I'm able to process a video on Premiere Pro, edit a photo on Photoshop, and and be watching multiple live streams out on Twitch supporting other streamers, all without any issues or conflicts. Now to understand what levels you want, this is gonna rely very heavily on the capture card that you use. Each one's going to have a bare requirement you should see, but in general, what you wanna make sure you have is at least a Ryzen 5 or an i5 processor that's at the baseline, at least about 1,800 to 1,000 on your GPU level, and at least about eight gigabytes of RAM. But all of this is gonna depend very heavily on the capture card you use, which leads us to number five. Capture cards are a required piece of equipment if you're streaming off of any type of console, or you're doing a dual PC setup. And basically what the capture card does is it is a separate chip or device that is capturing your gameplay and transmitting it back to your streaming PC to decrypt and decode so that your OBS or your Streamlabs can process it and broadcast it in the way that it needs to be done. Now, personally, I use the Elgato HD 60S Plus. The difference between the S Plus and the S or S minus is the S Plus allows for 4K pass-through. That means that I can continue to game in 4K from my Xbox One and have the audio in the game be captured through the device without any problems. This device does not allow for the capture of 4K gameplay, which is fine because when we go through Streamlabs in a different video, you'll realize you're never gonna be broadcasting in 4K anyway. Now there are other cheaper options that are out there, but what I've found when it comes to technology is you get what you pay for. And a capture card is something that's so critical to the overall processing that it is not somewhere that you wanna cut corners. Now I get asked all the time about the setup on the Elgato and it couldn't be more simple. The Elgato itself is a little hockey puck looking item. On one side, you're gonna have a place where you can plug in the HDMI that comes from either your console or your gaming PC. Then you're gonna have on the other side an HDMI that goes out and goes to your monitor or TV. It's super simplistic. There's then simply just a micro USB that goes out of this to your PC that it sends the captured game audio to and game play footage, and it is that simple. Plug in from the console, plug in from the TV or monitor, and plug into the computer and you're done. So that's it. I think that those are the five most important things you need to be considering when starting to build your streaming setup. It's going to be your audio, your lighting, your camera, your PC, and then your capture card. Focus on those five items first so you can build everything else around there. Also, don't forget, on a lot of this stuff, you can start cheaper, right? You can have budget options. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of the items I might not recommend that with, such as your PC or your capture card. But with things like your audio, your camera, and your lighting, those are all things that you can get budget items up front and then be able to add to your collection as you continue to grow and bring in new revenue. If you're curious about some budget options, down below I did go ahead and list out on kit.co a starter setup that I would recommend for people just getting started, as well as my current kit and everything that's out there today. You can feel free to check that out, get some good ideas, and leave a comment on this video if you have any additional questions of things that I didn't cover. Another unbelievable resource that I could not leave this video without telling you guys about is our Discord channel. The Bear Gang has an unbelievable Discord with an AMA server or an Ask Me Anything server, where we have hundreds hundreds of members who could potentially answer your question, whether it's tech related, gaming related, or anything in between. If you're not part of our Discord, we'd highly encourage you to join. Again, the invite is actually down in the link below in the description. It'd be really cool to see you in there. Again, if this video was helpful for you guys, make sure to subscribe if you're not already. If you check that little bell, you'll be notified anytime any new videos come up in the future. My goal is to do more videos like this coming almost every single week. So if you have a particular topic that you'd like me to talk about, make sure you comment that in the comments as well. I would love to hear your ideas. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, happy gaming.